Hello everyone, in this video we will set up an eye-catching and flashy dashboard in 5 simple steps. This dashboard is fully interactive. There are so many options in this dashboard which users can click to play around with the information. In building this dashboard, you will learn a great set of skills. You will learn how to work with shapes and make them dynamic. The engine of this dashboard runs on pivot tables. Therefore, we will go through advanced pivot tables techniques like how to associate and disassociate slicers from pivot tables and many more. You will study custom formatting and conditional formatting techniques like applied in this column. This video will also teach you about how to build dynamic and beautiful charts such as these ones down here. And best of all, you will step up your design game by learning how to set up custom color palette to maintain consistent colors, how to distribute and align shapes evenly to make your reports look visually pleasing, and so much more. So I hope you're excited and I look forward to seeing you. Alright, so first thing first, let's navigate through our data and get some familiarity. We have 21 columns and round about 10,000 rows. This data shows sales of a fictional superstore for four years from 2015 to 2018. We will use the following strategy in setting up this dashboard. We will first create a pivot table from this data set and put it on a new sheet. Let's call it a working sheet. Next, we will set up a dashboard sheet. This is where our final dashboard will live. Once the working sheet is set up, we will link our dashboard to the working worksheet. As a first step, let's do some wireframing. Wireframing the dashboard will give us an idea of all the data needed. It also gives us a sense of planning, saving you a lot of time later on. So let's start off. This is how we want the final dashboard to look like. So based on this, I will do some rough sketching of how I want my dashboard elements to be spread out. So on the top left, I will like to have a logo. I will create a border box by pressing Ctrl, Shift and 7 on my keyboard. And inside this box, I will write logo for now. Then we will have, let's say, six boxes here. And then we will have a separator line somewhere over here. So in order to create a line, I'll just put in a shape and put a line here. For now, we will not worry about formatting a lot. So over here, we will have four tables. So let's say my first table will come in somewhere in this range. After that, we will need another separator line over here. And in the end, we will need two charts here. And next, I will add some space for the filter buttons. Now that we have set up the wireframe, as a second step, let's jot down all the data points we will need for our dashboard. So let's review the data points I have identified here. In the top left box, we will have sales number for the latest here. The second box will have the sales number for the last year, followed by the third box which will show the growth. Next, we have the profit number for the latest year, followed by the profit for the previous year, and then the profit growth. All these boxes should be connected to buttons. 
These buttons should enable user to filter these boxes by either category or segment. In the middle, we have four tables. The first table will show sales for top 10 subcategories for year 2017 and 2016, followed by a column for growth. Second table will show the same data, but instead of subcategory, it will have states. These two tables should be filterable by category. Table 3 and 4 are very similar to table 1 and 2. Only difference is that we will need to have segment as the filter rather than category. In the bottom section, we need charts. The first chart will show sales and price for each quarter from year 2014 to 2017. The second chart should show the top 10 states with the highest sales arranged in descending order. Later, we will also add a feature where users can select if they want to choose top 10 or bottom 10 states by sales. Both the charts should be filterable by category, segment, or ship mode. In the third step, we will start setting up the data identified in step number two. I will first rename my wireframe sheet as dashboard wireframe. Then I'll make a copy of the sheet and call it dashboard final. Plus I will also rename sheet one as the source data. So first of all, I'll need to set up a pivot table that shows me the data for the top six boxes. That is sales for the latest year, sales for the last year and the profit numbers. So let's do that. I will go to the source data, select the entire data set and add pivot table by pressing the Alt N V T on my keyboard. Alternatively, you can also go to the insert tab and add pivot table from there. I will specify the worksheet where I want my pivot to appear. That is working sheet cell A3. And there we go, we have our pivot set up. So first of all, we need the sales for the two years. So I'll simply go and select order, order date and put it into years. I'll remove the quarters and the order date. I'll just need the years. And on the years, I will filter just 2016 and 17 because I need the data for the latest two years. Next, I will just drop in the sales values and I will drop in the profit values. I will first format these as numbers. Now, when it comes to sales and profit growth numbers, I have two options. I can either have them as calculated fields inside the pivot tables, or I can have them as manual calculations on the side. For this case, I'll go with the second option. Cool. So we have the data set up for at least this part of our dashboard. Now, notice that in the final dashboard, we also want this part to be impacted by filter buttons that we will provide at the top. So let's set up those filter buttons. To do that, I will create a slicer for category and segment field in this pivot table. I will right click on the category field and add a slicer. Then I'll do the same for segment field. Let's set up the other tables. We need one table which shows sales by subcategory for 2017 and 16 and gets filtered by category. Then we need another similar table, but something that gets filtered only by segment. And then we need sales by cities. So let's go back to the working. I will set up a new pivot table similar to how I did for the first one. I'll go to the source data, select the entire data, press the Alt N V shortcut and get a new pivot table. 
on the working sheet in cell A14. For this pivot table, I'll need the subcategory in the rows, sales in the values, and then I'll drag order date to the columns. I'll filter for only year 2016 and 2017. And then I'll also get rid of grand totals. Next, looking at the prototype of final output, I see that in the tables we only need top 10 values. Therefore, I will go to my pivot tables and filter for only top 10 items. To do that, I will go to my pivot table, click on the drop down in the row labels, then click on value filters and select top 10. Then I will also sort the list in the descending order of sales. So this way, the subcategory with the highest sales in both the years combined will come at the top and then it's going to move in the descending order. Okay, cool. So I think this looks fine. The only thing we need to do now is add a filter for category here or a slicer for category. Similar to how we did it for the first pivot table, I will select any cell on the second pivot table, go to the category field, right click on it and add a slicer. Now, we already have a slicer here for category, but this slicer is only impacting this pivot table. And this slicer is only impacting this pivot table. If you wanna learn how, you go to pivot table analyze, just keep your cursor on the pivot table that you wanna inspect and click on filter connections. So you will see that this particular pivot table is only impacted by a slicer of category one. Now, which slicer is category one? How can we know that? I'll just click on OK. I'll select the slicer, go to slicer and click on slider search settings. And this is the name of the slicer. It's called category one. I can name it as category table one just for simplicity, because we know that this table is for table one. This is the data for table one. And I'll just click on OK. And now if I go to pivot table analyze and click on filter connection, it will say that this pivot table is only impacted by slicer that has the name of category for table one, and it's not being impacted by this slicer. And if you want, we'll go to this one and click on the filter connections. You will see that the top table is getting impacted by only the top two slicers. So now we need to set up the second table, which is which shows us sales by cities for the top 10 cities in the same way. So let's go back here. Since I want the second table to be impacted by the same exact slicer, I have again two options. One is to set up the pivot table from scratch and then link it to the slicer. Or I can just copy this pivot table here down, let's say somewhere here. Maybe we can even keep it there. And there you go. Now you will see that this pivot table as well will already be linked to this, this to the slicer of category table one. So now all I need to do is instead of subcategory, I will replace this field with city. And again, I will put a value filter of top 10. So it will give me top 10 items by sum of sales and then I will just sort it in the descending order of sales. So we have the data available for this portion. We have it set up for this portion. Now let's do the same for this one. Now we need very identical tables for this particular portion. So to save time, I will just copy these tables and put them over here. I'll name it as data for table one and table two. And this one is for the data for table three 
and table four. So what is the difference between two tables at the top and two at the bottom? The two tables at the top, which are also the table one and table two on our wireframe, are getting impacted by the category slicer, whereas table three and four will get impacted by the segment field slicer. So I don't need to change much now. All I need to change is just disconnect these two pivot tables from the category slicer. To do that, I'll go to pivot a table analyze filter connections and uncheck it. And then I'll do the same for the fourth table. I'll place my cursor anywhere in the table, go to filter connections and then uncheck the category slicer. Now, if I tweak with this or play around with this slicer, these two tables would get impacted, but these will not. And I want these two tables to be impacted by the slicer of segment field. So I'll put my cursor anywhere in this table and right click on the segment and add it as a slicer. I'll just name this segment as instead of segment one, I'll say segment for table. Okay. So let's see this pivot table is already getting impacted by a segment table. I can see it over here. And this pivot table is currently not impacted by any slicer, but I'll connect it to segment table one. Now, if I select anything here, you will see that these two tables will get impacted. Yep, the numbers are changing in both the tables and nothing else is getting impacted. Good, so we have the data set up for all of this portion. Now we just need to set up the data for this portion and then we will start our dashboarding. So for this portion, I need the trend of sales and price by quarter for the last four years. Let's set up this table first. I think it's slightly different. So I'll just go back to the source data again, select the entire source data, press Alt NVT, and then I'll select existing worksheet. And then I will go to my working and put the data over here. This makes sense. All right. Now I need the years first, so I'll just drag the order date to rows and I'll get rid of quarters and order date and or maybe I'll need the quarters. So I'll just keep the quarters, I'll just keep the quarters in there. Then I will open these cells. I will add sales and quantity to the values. For, for the purposes of the chart, we need price, but we do not have the price field in the data set by default. So we will calculate it based on the sales and quantity. By default, my table is set up in a compact form and I want it to be in tabular format as that will help me later on in picking up the numbers for charting. With the table selected, I will go to design tab, click on the report layout and select show in tabular format. Now my years and quarters are side by side with each other. Now we want to set up a chart. We have two options here. One is to go with the pivot chart. The second one is to go with the general bar chart. Pivot charts are slightly inflexible when it comes to formatting. Therefore, I'll go with the general one. To set up a bar chart, I'll need to bring the data outside of the pivot table. I will first do that. Note that I'm linking the numbers via formula so they always stay connected to the pivot table. Next, I will add a column for price as we do not have the price data by default. Price will be calculated as sales divided by quantity. And then I will format these numbers as currency. Next, we will set up a column chart. To do that, I will select the data, click on insert tab and select the column chart. Then I will add a second series to this chart. To do that, I will right click anywhere on the chart, click on select data and then add a new series. I will give the name of the series and in the data, I will give range which contains data for pricing. Next, I will change the chart series type to line.
Also, I will plot the pricing series on a secondary axis. In the second chart, we need states with the highest and lowest sales of all time. For this, we can create a copy of the last pivot table. And instead of years and quarters, we can put in the state name. Then I will sort it in descending order. Similar to the last instance, I will create a copy of data outside of the pivot table so I can set up the chart manually. Next, I will select the top 10 rows and create a column chart by going into the insert tab and selecting column chart. Now that our charts are arranged, let's set up the filter buttons, which are essentially the slicer. We need three slicers here, a slicer for ship mode, category and segment. So I will put that in. The procedure is the same. I'll select any cell in the first pivot table or the pivot table for the first chart and then go to the relevant fields like segment, right click on it and add a slicer. So I'll fast forward the video for a few seconds from here. To ensure we don't mix the slicers up, I will give these three new slicers a unique name. I will suffix their names with underscore charts. Now my table for chart 1 will be connected to the slicers, but pivot table for the second chart will not yet be connected to these slicers. The reason is I had used the first pivot table to set up the slicers. So I will go to the second table, click on filter connections and put a check next to the relevant slicers. Let's quickly check if our slicers are working. It seems they are working fine. Now that we are done with our working sheet, let's start building out our dashboard. First of all, I will insert my logo. To do that, I'll go to the Insert tab, click on Insert Picture, and then select the location where my logo is saved. Next, we will create the six boxes that will act as our top cards. I will first set up one box. I'll click on Insert and add a shape. Next, I want to set up a color for my dashboard. Now, if I manually change the color one by one, that will take a lot of time. I know right now we have only one box, but very soon we will have lots of elements on our dashboard, and changing the color for each of them can be time consuming. To fix this, I will set up my primary color in Excel as the color on which I want to base my dashboard. I want my dashboard to have the same color as my logo, so I'll set that up as my primary color. To do that, I will go to the Page Layout tab, click on Colors, Customize Colors, and then change the color of Accent 1. You will see that once I change the color of Accent 1, all the colors, be it the pivot table, slicers, everything will take on that color or some shade of that color. So I will put in the hex code of my color. Another option is to use an eyedropper, or you can just select the color from the RGB code. But since I remember the hex code of my logo, I'll just do that. Now we can see that not only the box shape, but the pivot tables, charts, all the elements on our Excel workbook have acquired the same color. Next, I will do some basic formatting. Reason I want to do some formatting at this stage is because we will make copy of the shape. So it's a good idea to do some formatting right now. I will remove the outline and put in some shadow. 
Next, I will create six copies of the shape and align them in the middle. To align all of the shapes, I'll select them, go to Format, click on the Align, and then I can click on Align Middle. This is a very helpful feature in Excel, and it helps you align your objects precisely. Next, we will add a text box, which will define the heading of each of the cards. I will remove the outline and give a transparent background. Now inside these boxes, I want to show numbers and I want to keep them dynamic. To do that, I will double click on the shape, go to the formula bar and type in the self reference from where I want my shape to pick the number from. For latest year sales, I know that the number is in cell B5 of working sheet. So I'll write that in the formula. I will now do some formatting to make this number pop out a bit. Since the first box is shaped up quite well, I will recreate six copies of it. Then I will update header for each of the boxes. Now I will update the formulas for each of the box, for example, link the last year sales box to last year sales number on the working sheet and so on. Note that when I update the formula, the formatting will go back to default. A quick way to fix this is via the Format Painter. I'll, I'll select the first box, double click on the Format Painter, and then click on the other boxes. You will see that other boxes will acquire the same exact formatting as the first box. Next, I will make the separator line slightly thick and give it a bit lighter shade of the same color. In the middle portion, we need to set up the tables. I will set up the table headers and give them bold formatting. Once the headers are set up, I'll copy the first table and paste the column widths on the rest of the tables. This will make sure our table looks symmetric and even. Now I will start linking these table ranges to the pivot tables on the working sheet. Note that the growth versus PY is not available on the working sheet, so we will need to calculate it here. Now in the growth column, I want the positives to appear green and negatives to appear red. I can achieve that via custom formatting. With the range selected, I will press Ctrl-1 shortcut on my keyboard this will take me to custom formatting window. First, I will click on custom. In custom formatting, the characters before the semicolon define the formatting when the number is positive. The characters after the semicolon define the formatting for, the, for when the number is negative. Therefore, before the semicolon, I will put color 10, which is a kind of a shade of green inside the square brackets. And after semicolon, I will put red again inside the square brackets. When I click on OK, you will see that the negative numbers will appear red and the positive numbers will appear green.
Now in the same way, I will set up rest of the tables. Moving on, we will bring in the charts from the working sheet. With the charts selected, I will press Ctrl X to cut them, then go back to the dashboard sheet and press Ctrl V. Then I will do the same with all the slicers. With this, we are done with almost 80% of our dashboard and the last step is to do some final touches and formatting. First, we will fix the slicers. We want the slicers to look like buttons that users can click. To start off, I will convert the slicer from one column to three columns. With slicer selected, I will click on the slicer tab and then increase the number of columns. Next, I want to get rid of the slicer borders. To do that, I will select any slicer and then click on slicer tab and duplicate the current slicer style. I will give this style a new name. Let's say slicer underscore no border. I will click on format and get rid of the border. But you will notice that there is no change to the slicers this is because they are still on the previous style. To apply the new style, I will again select any slicer, then go to the slicer tab and select the new style which we just set up. Next, with the slicer selected, I'll go to the settings and uncheck the display header. With that, the header will not display anymore. Now, I will repeat this step for all the slicers. As the next step, I will format the charts. I will increase the gap width of the bars, add shadow to the bars, convert the axis to 1000 units, add data labels to the pricing line, make all the fonts black, and get rid of borders on both the charts. I'll fast forward the video from here. However, if you want to know how exactly these formattings were done, you can slow down the video and watch it in detail as well. Next, for the growth rates, I want to show a triangle facing upwards for the positive numbers and a downwards triangle for the negative numbers. To get those triangles, I will go to Insert tab, click on Symbol. In the font, I will select Arial. There, I will be able to find the triangles. I will insert them into any cell. 
Now I will select the range which I want to format. Go to custom formatting by pressing Ctrl 1 on my keyboard and then put these triangles in the custom formatting logic which I've defined. And as the next step, I will copy and paste the formatting on the other columns. Now let's check if everything is working. I see that when we select certain categories, the table on the left is showing errors. This is because there is not enough data when certain categories are selected. To get rid of this error, we can build an if-then-else logic. This logic is basically telling Excel that if there is any data, then return that data, otherwise keep the cell blank. I will then copy this formula to all the relevant cells. Although the error is gone, there is still one problem and that is we can see grand totals in our data. To solve this, I will go to the pivot tables on the working sheet and remove the grand totals. Next, I will apply the same logic to the growth versus PY column. And after that, I will copy these formulas to the rest of the tables. Now let's check it out once more. Everything seems to be working fine. Now let's add the last feature. Currently, the chart at the bottom right shows the top 10 states by sales. We want to give our user the option to either select the top 10 states or the bottom 10 states. For that, we will need to add the option button. To do that, let's enable the developer tab. To enable the developer tab, go to file, options, customize ribbon, and then check the developer tab. Click on OK and you will see the developer tab will be available. Now from the developer tab, I'll go to insert and then insert two option buttons. Now I will right click on the option button and provide the cell link. This cell will get populated with either one or two depending upon which option does the user select. I will provide the link to the cell on the working sheet right next to the data for this chart. Lastly, I will apply a combination of switch and sort formula. This formula will sort the values from the pivot table in ascending or descending order depending upon what option user has selected. Now our user can toggle between top 10 and bottom 10 options and the chart will reflect the right results. How about we make the title of the chart dynamic as well, such that the chart title should show highest or lowest depending upon the option selected. To do this, I will utilize another switch formula. This switch formula will give highest or lowest depending upon what option is selected. 
Then I will concatenate the result of this switch formula to create a chart title. And finally, I will link the chart title to this final result. Now if I select bottom, the title of the chart changes along with it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit the like button and also don't forget to subscribe.